Hi guys, this is the second video of three in which we will have a look at defining the physical properties we use to identify different minerals. In this video, we will have a look at the physical properties of hardness, cleavage and fracture, the density of minerals and whether the mineral reacts with acid and what this can tell us about the mineral. In the next video, we'll have a look at a table summarising mineral properties and a flowchart which will help us to understand the path we should take in order to identify different minerals. The next property we would use to classify minerals is mineral hardness. Hardness means the relative ability of the mineral to resist being scratched. It actually represents the resistance of the atomic bonds within the crystal structure and their resistance to being broken. The hardness of a mineral is measured on Mohs hardness scale and we say that a hard mineral can scratch a more soft mineral which is pretty obvious. So Mohs hardness scale rates all the minerals according to how hard they are. And we can compare their hardness to known items such as drills, nails or our fingernail. So in looking at this scale we can say that talc is the softest mineral and it will be scratched by any mineral above it. Quartz, which is quite a hard mineral, will be able to scratch any of these minerals and will be scratched by all of the minerals above it. Using this scale is quite good when we are trying to determine what sort of mineral we are looking at in the lab. We can scratch our samples with all these different types of things to see where our mineral fits into the Mohs hardness scale. Another property we look at when we're trying to classify minerals is the cleavage or fracture of the mineral. The cleavage and fracture describes the way in which the mineral crystal will break. Most minerals have a tendency to break or fracture in one or two particular directions. And these directions depend on the atomic structure within the crystal. Because it depends on the atomic structure within the crystal, all minerals of one particular type will always fracture in this way. And it is a pretty consistent and reliable property to look for when we're trying to classify minerals. Here we can see there are a few different types of cleavage or fracture. Muscovite mica will break off in only one direction and therefore, therefore will create sheets or plates of mineral when it breaks off. Feldspar will break in two separate directions, one, two directions, and therefore, and therefore it will have a third direction which will break in any sort of way. Halite will break off in perfect cubes as it will break in three directions, all of which are at 90 degrees to each other. Here are our three directions, one, two, three. Calcite will also break off in three directions, but however these directions are at an angle to each other and we will end up with a rhombohedral crystal shape. Here are some more examples of what we've just been looking at. Muscovite mica, as I said, will crack off in sheets. Calcite, as I said, will form rhombohedral shapes. And feldspar presents cleavage in two directions. However, the third direction will be unknown. The last property of minerals we look at is density. When we look at density, we're considering the specific gravity of the mineral, which means the mass per unit volume of the mineral. And sometimes we can compare this to water. For example, quartz will have a specific gravity of around 2.7 compared to olivine which has a specific gravity of 3.4. So by measuring the specific gravity of the mineral we can get an idea of what sort of mineral we're looking at. Here we have a table of all the specific gravities of different minerals. These are quite helpful although don't try and remember them. It's just good to know that specific gravity can be used as a property to determine mineral classification. And finally, the last property we might look at is, does the mineral react with acid? While this property only really applies to calcite, because calcite will produce bubbles when you put acid on it, it's quite helpful when we're trying to classify minerals in the lab. That's the end of this video on the properties of minerals. Now we have had a look at the colour, streak, luster, hardness, cleavage and fracture, density and reaction with acid. All of these properties we will use in the next video when we look at the table summarising these mineral properties.